Hey folks, and welcome to the sixth webinar in the Tosca Implementer Series. Our webinar today is titled Holistic Modeling of HPC, FAS, and Edge Applications with Radon and Sodalite Tosca Extensions. That's a mouthful. We have four speakers with us today representing two different organizations. This is truly a story of collaboration. Um, I'll just share a few details before we get started today about our four guest speakers. The first one, Giuliani, Giuliano Casale, joined the Department of Computing at Imperial College London in 2010, where he is currently a reader. He teaches and does research in performance engineering and cloud computing, topics on which he's published more than 100 refereed papers. Domenico Presenza is senior researcher at the engineering R&D lab. Currently, he is a leading the team developing SARA, a socially assistive robotic solutions and vision for the engineering areas healthcare suite. Dragon Radolovich's background includes work in the financial field, banks, financial institutions, and other software industry as a software architect and project manager. His main points of interest are cloud architectures. Currently, he works at XLabs Research as a project manager and, and, the, uh, work, and is the work package leader for the Sodalite H2020 project. Camille Takmakov Tuk joined the HPC Center in Stuttgart as a research engineer, he is currently working in so the Sodalite project and responsible for modeling and orchestration of HPC use cases. His current research interests are cloud and HPC infrastructure, SDN and network coding. So as you can see, we have an illustrious group with us today. We will have closing comments by Chris Lowers. Chris is the CEO of Ubicity and he is the chair of the OASIS Tosca Technical Committee. As you can see, the meeting is being recorded. We will follow up with the link um, after, the, after we finish up today. We will be taking questions at the end. So feel free to post your questions in the um, Q&A bubble below, as you can see on your screen, and we will get to those when we can. And with that, and sorry for the, the butchering, I uh, took a pass at it. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for your patience. And we'll start with Giuliano, thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Dee. Uh, let me share the, the, sky, the screen and uh, you should see my uh, slides now coming up. Uh, so, so thank you very, very much for the kind introduction and uh, thank you uh, to Oasis and the Tosca TC in the first place for inviting us uh, here today to speak. Uh, the story that we want to tell is a story of our collaboration between uh, two projects. Uh, to research projects, uh, Radon and Sodalite, that have worked together to uh, develop a number of extensions to, to Tosca that can be applied to holistically model HPC functions as a service and edge based uh, applications. Uh, these two pro are research projects funded by the European uh, Commission. Uh, they comprise respectively eight uh, and nine uh, organizations, and we focus on the written side uh, on uh, applying Tosca to um, the design of uh, serverless-based uh, uh, applications. And in particular, uh, we are uh, developing an advanced DevOps framework with IDE based on uh, uh, Tosca and its extensions. Uh, whereas uh, Sodalite uh, has focused uh, their work on uh, uh, high-performance computing and uh, cloud, and so they're using Tosca to um, deploy and uh, manage uh, uh, applications on uh, uh, these uh, targets, and also have built uh, an environment uh, uh, comprising several tools and a smart ID uh, to uh, model using uh, uh, Tosca, uh, these kind of applications. And uh, um, we have uh, established uh, among these two projects a collaboration uh, this year that uh, has led us uh, to uh, study the problem of how we can uh, use Tosca uh, to uh, support uh, the um, uh, deployment and the operation of applications that span across uh, 
as, as we said, HPC, Cloud, uh, Edge. And, and clearly, um, there are several uh, uh, architectural approaches to design these applications. So modeling can help in reasoning uh, uh, on these architectures. Uh, but when you look uh, at the different tools and software engineering frameworks that are out there, uh, they tend to be specific uh, either to uh, just a subset of these uh, uh, deployment targets, or maybe they are specific to a particular platform like Azure or AWS. And therefore, uh, we found quite difficult to, to find a solution that was really holistic and allowed uh, uh, modeling and uh, also uh, the development of, of tools on top of these uh, uh, models to uh, design and operate uh, hybrid uh, Pictures. And when we looked at uh, what Tusca can do for, uh, for these, of course, there is a lot uh, out there, but there were also a number of limitations. So for example, if you uh, think to uh, function as a service, there is event-driven behavior, like uh, uh, events that trigger uh, the execution of functions. So how do you express these uh, in Tusca? And, and often functions uh, uh, process data in flight, and so how do you make this data in the underpinning streams um, a primary citizen in the Tosca model? And, uh, and on top of this, how you use these extensions to build uh, frameworks that uh, really leverage these extensions. And our proposal uh, that we jointly developed among the two uh, projects is uh, this new hybrid compute uh, profile is uh, released at the GitHub repo you see in this slide. Uh, and is a proposal that uh, we have defined in collaboration also with the Tosca Emerging Compute ad hoc committee. Um, we would like to illustrate uh, uh, the work we have carried out uh, concretely, looking at two uh, use cases. One comes from uh, Sodalite and looks at uh, uh, water availability prediction, uh, uh, focusing on uh, computation of uh, snow-related uh, uh, indexes that predict the availability of water. Uh, and the other comes from Radon and focuses uh, on assisted uh, living, and so how edge uh, devices can be used to assist, uh, for example, the elderly uh, think to situations like uh, fall management. Um, uh, in this first part of the presentation, we will look at the Sodalize No use case, and I will spend a few words to introduce it before handing over to my uh, colleagues. Uh, this use case uh, uh, has been defined by uh, Politecnico di Milano, which is a university based in northern Italy, quite, quite close to the Alps. And, and so as part of their collaborations, uh, they are uh, trying to come up with a system uh, that can uh, analyze publicly available images uh, of uh, the Alps and the and there's no situation on uh, uh, these mountains to predict water availability. And this is, of course, because uh, in mountain regions, water is often stored as snow on the mountains. And in order to build a system that does this uh, automatically, you need to have uh, a fairly complicated data pipeline that is able to pull uh, uh, content uh, in terms of images uh, coming, uh, for example, from uh, users, uh, think to uh, social media or uh, uh, sources on the web, but also possibly webcam images uh, that uh, are pointed to particular mountains that collect periodically uh, images. And so uh, this uh, kind of information is uh, naturally quite heterogeneous, and you tend to uh, need uh, a set of uh, um, operations uh, uh, that form together a pipeline to be able to come up with a, a computation of uh, indexes related to the snow that provide uh, this uh, information about water availability. Uh, to give you a better sense of this kind of uh, use case, uh, what you might have is uh, uh, this uh, set of several images I'm showing here, 11 images that show the same uh, mountain from different angles uh, in different uh, types of illuminations. Uh, so the weather condition 
can be also different. And so you need uh, all these filters to come up with a, say, daily median uh, image that gives uh, uh, a, a sense uh, of the status of the snow on the mountain for the day. Um, in terms of uh, the challenge when we look at Tosca deployment and management, let's try to see how we can uh, implement a system like this. And, uh, and this is uh, an architecture that gives an example uh, of uh, um, hybrid deployment across HPC cloud and involving also edge and uh, function as a service. Uh, so in this system, we have uh, a part of the architecture that deals with uh, offline uh, training. And so uh, these images we have been seeing uh, can form a, a training data set. Um, in, uh, in our uh, installation, this is uh, hosted uh, on S3 on the cloud and therefore needs to be transferred uh, to an HPC facility where the uh, complex uh, scientific calculations related to these uh, snow indexes as well as uh, the filters um, are uh, 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 can, can be uh, considered at this stage to build a neural network model that is uh, uh, able to make predictions about the uh, water availability. And this model uh, is uh, uh, moved then uh, to uh, other services uh, in the cloud that uh, process the uh, largest uh, amount of images. So, so you use the train model now uh, to test the neural network on the uh, images uh, uh, over time. And, uh, and this uh, um, information together with the, uh, the, the images themselves and the indexes is then uh, uh, moved towards a front end, uh, say regional snow news front end, uh, where uh, a number of uh, pre-filtering steps through function as a service uh, um, of, uh, functions are applied, for example, to create uh, thumbnails that are exposed uh, on this front end. And this front end uh, can also uh, receive uh, uh, contributions uh, uh, from uh, edge devices like uh, uh, community images uh, taken by smartphones that can be uh, processed uh, um, also uh, potentially at the edge of things, for example, to scientific units that take uh, uh, images of certain mountains from, from a base camp, they can have their edge devices that then uh, uh, update uh, these images on the front end. And moreover, these images can be fed back uh, to the uh, HPC space for further training. So the problem we are trying to address is how we can orchestrate something so heterogeneous and complex uh, using Tosca. And so I hand over now uh, to Camille uh, for uh, seeing how we did this. Thank you. Thank you, Giuliano. Right. Uh, so I will be. Uh, I will provide the highlight of the hybrid computing profile, and it's uh, Tosca node types for HPC, cloud, and FAS, and to show how we connect the application components deployed over these uh, various uh, heterogeneous platforms. And at the end, I will show the um, two demos uh, of the work we've done so far. Um, so there exist uh, platforms that we could take advantage of when we want to decrease the execution time of uh, hybrid applications. So for example, uh, one could utilize uh, HPC resources to execute batch computation in a performant way, uh, such as uh, machine learning training or scientific simulations. Uh, in cloud, we usually use and scale our own virtual infrastructure and host uh, services. And using serverless and fast platform, we can perform certain computation, uh, also called functions, in a very uh, scalable and distributed way without the specification of certain infrastructure. So the hybrid compute profile uh, we're developing exactly for this reason and allow users to deploy uh, their hybrid, hybrid application components onto, this, onto these platforms and connect the components into the workflow or pipelines. So the profile itself, uh, basically a set of Tosca libraries and Ansible playbooks that allow us to do that. 
and we are currently supporting deployment of uh, batch components uh, uh, into HPC managed by Slurm or PBS uh, workload managers for cloud. We are provisioning resources and deployment of uh, OpenStack and AWS. And for the serverless, uh, uh, it is uh, OpenFast, AWS, Lambda, Azure, and Google Cloud functions. So for the HPC, uh, we developed node types that define uh, types of clusters. Uh, either they are managed by the workload manager or simply a set of compute nodes uh, where application uh, can be executed at. And uh, if an application is containerized, we also provide support for singularity runtime, uh, which is used mostly in HPC due to the uh, performance and security, and also the definition of application parameters, uh, for example, what is the executable arguments, how many MPI ranks if the application is uh, parallelizable. And the application can be encapsulated uh, into the batch shop uh, where, the, where we define the job parameters uh, like wall time, number of nodes, uh, whether we want to some specific nodes like GPU nodes and the multiple jobs then could be uh, put into the uh, workflow and would be executed in the specific order and independent jobs uh, can be even parallelized. For the cloud, uh, we developed node types of provisioning of certain resources, uh, virtual machines, uh, uh, security groups, key pairs uh, in AWS and uh, OpenStack, and also the creation of Docker environment like host network uh, certificates, uh, volumes, and the application components. Um, uh, basically in the, in, the, in the form of containers. Uh, an example of a cloud deployment show, shown in the figure below, where we have the OpenStack VM, which depends on the key pair and the security rule, uh, and uh, the Docker host and the registry and the network are hosted on this uh, VM. And the, basically the Dockerized component uh, is hosted on the Docker host and also the uh, Docker volume. And the Docker component is basically depends on the uh, Docker volume. With respect to the serverless and fast, we have Tosca node types for the specific platforms. Uh, as I said, it's Lambda, Azure, Google Cloud function, uh, open fast. Uh, these functions are triggered by certain events such as uh, storage updates and a a API requests. And for the notification and function trigger, triggering, we developed uh, an invoker requirement shared between the uh, entities that produce events, uh, such as uh, API gateways, object storage, uh, and another function uh, that's shown in this uh, picture. And the specific platform should implement its own mechanism to trigger a function uh, via events. So for AWS, there is an Ansible uh, module for S3 bucket notifications. So when an object is added into the S3 bucket, um, then AWS Lambda function is triggered. Um, and as an example, uh, we could see that there is uh, uh, AWS uh, bucket uh, and the function deployed in the uh, node templates and the S3 bucket, uh, which is the object storage, um, has the uh, invoker requirement uh, with the relation uh, to the function. And it has uh, also the relationship with template AWS triggers, which is triggered on this certain event when the object is created. So, so far uh, I explained the node types that we could deploy and the component uh, of, of the components uh, into the particular platform. However, there are often the cases when we would need to transfer data from one platform to another, for example, from HPC to cloud or from cloud to FAS. So while uh, in cloud and FAS world, uh, there are quite a lot of uh, methods for data transfer, where HTTP, FTP, or S3. Uh, in HPC, the connectivity is limited due to security constraints, uh, and only SSH and uh, grid FTP are supported. The grid FTP is uh, a special uh, FTP, uh, let's say, type uh, that allows us to send securely uh, and uh, and more uh, in a more also in a more performant uh, way using the multi-threads and send the data in parallel. 
So to resolve this, um, uh, he basically uh, the data management over uh, hybrid platforms. Uh, we used Apache and iFi, which is, which is a cross-system data flow service, uh, which already supports the connectors to various cloud storage system um, and stream platforms. And we extended it to support the grid FTP connector. So with these connectors, uh, uh, for, our, for our cases, it is now possible to define a pipeline block that transfer data from one supported platform into another. Um, so for example, now we could uh, establish the connection between the cloud connectors and HPC. And approach we use uh, that we model such pipeline blocks in Tosca and orchestrate their life cycle uh, using NIFI REST API, uh, which is basically exposed uh, after the deployment of the NIFI. So what is the data pipeline block? Uh, so this is the entity which executes the pipeline tasks such as data processing, API calls, invocation, fetching or pushing data to storage system or stream platforms. Uh, and internally, it has the ingestion and emission queues um, used for buffering of input and output data. And using these queues, uh, multiple pipelines can be connected, uh, forming a group. And the input and the output pipes uh, are the gateways for receiving and forwarding data to the uh, external data endpoints. So apart from pipeline blocks designed for uh, data transmissions, for example, the snow uh, source and the destination ones, uh, we also have the midway um, pipeline blocks uh, that allow us to do some actions like encryption, executing some commands, uh, also like uh, calling uh, functions or other uh, remote uh, APIs. And there is also a standalone, um, which basically uh, used to perform uh, into in, in independent activities, uh, uh, such as the copying from one S3 to another, and basically without passing data directly through the NIFI. As an example, we could see that uh, uh, how the two pipelines, uh, pipeline blocks uh, connected and performed data transfer from grid FTP server uh, in HPC infrastructure into the S3 in cloud. And there is a, one pipeline block is publishing data to S3, and another one is consuming data uh, from uh, grid FTP. And the grid FTP consumer uh, is then connected to the uh, S3 publisher via the uh, requirements uh, connect to the pipeline, um, which is common among all the supported data pipelines blocks that I showed uh, previously. As you could see in this uh, Tosca snippet, yeah. So now I'm going to uh, show the demos. Um, the first demo would be about the performing uh, AI training for one of these uh, snow use case components uh, with the data set taken from the S3 bucket. And the resulting uh, uh, inference model would be moved to another S3 bucket. So this is the uh, S3 bucket for the uh, training data set. And this is the uh, S3 bucket for the inference model. So we firstly upload the data set, uh, which is uh, currently a small one, just to, for the sake of the demo. Usually they are uh, 100 of uh, gigabytes. Oh, yeah, not 100. Quite larger than the megabytes. Yeah. So we now uploaded the data set, and then we basically uh, execute the service template uh, designed to uh, designed uh, for the training and getting the data uh, from S3 and sending it to S3 by grid FTP. So now we're deploying the. Uh, resources needed for NIFI instance. Uh, so NIFI is deployed on the VM. So for that, we need a key pair, security rules, and VM itself.
and then we deploy the uh, NiFi instance onto this VM. Now we create the NiFi pipeline block uh, that publishes data to the grid FTP endpoint and create the NiFi process that will consume the data from S3. And then we basically connect these two pipeline blocks. Yeah, but, current, uh, but right now we check uh, that there is a data set is absent at the moment. So now we uh, connect these two data pipeline blocks and this will move data from S3 to the great FTP uh, server via NiFi. And then we check. As we could see, the data set was moved. Now we're observing the execution of the uh, training. You could see that it's running and uh, it is in the GPU queue. That means it uses the GPU nodes. Um, and we see that the job now is completed and the inference model is produced. And then this model will be moved to another S3. Again, we create the pipeline block to publish the data to S3 then create the block for consuming data from grid FTP, and then we connect uh, them together using the uh, connect to pipeline um, requirement. And we see that the deployment is complete. Um, and then we check that now we have the uh, inference model uh, moved. So another uh, demo would be about um, uh, about the generation of thumbnails of the resulting uh, processed images uh, of the mountains uh, after the uh, snow computation pipeline. And then these thumbnails would be then used uh, by the weather report uh, front end. And we soon to plan to extend it with additional useful data like geoposition and the interpretation of the snow index to show warnings, like if the snow index is uh, close to critical. So here we have the uh, bucket for the uh, processed images that would be at the end of execution uh, of the uh, pipeline. Uh, then we have the, uh, the bucket for the thumbnails. And then this is the, just the dashboard for AWS Lambda. So now we execute the service template uh, again, we create the resources uh, needed uh, for the snow use case uh, and its component, like the VMs, uh, uh, key pairs, um, the security rules. And then we deploy the uh, snow use case components, which are dockerized. So once it, once it is uh, uh, completed, now we move to the part of creation of NiFi instance, um, which will then uh, move data from the uh, of the uh, images that we uh, generated in the snow use case, and then move it to the S3 bucket. So we're creating the uh, NiFi process that will consume the data from the uh, our local file system and move it to the S3 bucket. In a similar way, uh, we specify the uh, connect to the pipeline to connect those two uh, pipeline blocks. So once it's done, uh, we create the uh, Lambda functions and configure the S3 bucket uh, for receiving the, for triggering the events, which are uh, which I showed previously with the S3 object create event.
So once it's done, uh, we check the results. Now we see, um, so now we see that we uh, have received the images and then we see that the uh, Lambda function was deployed and then that it generated the uh, thumbnails. And with, then we uh, just comparing the results, checking how it looks like. So we take the daily Meridian uh, uh, image, processed image, and then uh, we just see how it looks like uh, as a regional image. And how it looks like uh, resized. Yeah. So, with respect to the edge deployment, uh, as an early prototype, we also developed uh, the thumbnail generation at the private edge cluster um, using OpenFast and MinIO. Uh, there we uh, have the lightweight Kubernetes cluster over the uh, cluster of uh, Raspberry Pis, and the image can be shared with neighboring uh, Android devices, creating the thumbnails. Um, so what we still require is the integration with the data pipelines managed by Minify. So basically the lightweight version of NiFi uh, so that we would respect the resources at the edge. and. Uh, Basically, this is what we need to complete the end-to-end -end, uh, service deployment. So, so far we experimented with the uh, AWS S3, Lambda, and GridFTP, and we would like to extend it to the open source technologies like uh, OpenFast and MinIO, and we would like to also uh, apply the development to another edge uh, use case of satellite vehicle OT, uh, which is basically an automotive use case. So these are the uh, current uh, state, uh, the uh, limitations, uh, the future work. Uh, now I will hand over to the to Dragan Radovich and he'll present the orchestration. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. I'll start sharing. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, so uh, as, you see, uh, as you saw before, it's, uh, it's fair to say that uh, behind every good Tosca project, there, there is a, a, a specific engine called the Tosca Orchestrator. And in both uh, projects, we use the XOPER Tosca Orchestrator developed by XLab. Uh, and then to put some context around this, uh, we actually, uh, want to show some history about the, the development of the XOPRA Tosca orchestrator. So we first met Tosca in the DICE project, when, which was about uh, uh, modeling the big data pipelines. Uh, and and we, at this project, we used the Cloudify and its own, uh, let's say, Tosca, Tosca flavor with and also developed some plugins for Cloudify. And we found uh, this very painful for uh, covering different platforms. Um, and at the same time, we also started looking at Ansible, which was uh, gaining popularity at the time. Uh, the Ansible, which is a configuration management tool and the deployment tool also, uh, but it had its own uh, shortcomings at, at, the, at that point uh, with regards when when the when the deployment gets large it uh, you have to take care about the the, the inventories the large part of the inventories the passing of the parameters is problem and, and things like this so we thought how about uh, join these two technologies the Tosca that we, we that we met in dice and also ansible for the execution of the life cycle and and so creation of the let's say a new orchestrator was the next logical step for us because we were planning to expand on this topic on the on the cloud deployment especially uh, heterogeneous environments deployment for
for, for different applications. So we started working uh, on the Exopra uh, Tosca Orchestrator in 2018. And the first release was in May 2019. Uh, and the current release is uh, 0 0.6.6 uh, with the specific inputs from, from both of the projects, uh, both Radon and, and Solite were, were actually uh, Supplying requirements to the to the Exopera uh, to the Exopera orchestrator. Uh, so why Exopera was a fine fit for for the two projects? First of all, the the ease of the of the defi definition of topology abstraction in in Tosca is really great, and also we have uh, we wanted to have maximum uh, impact for the DevOps teams because this was the actually the the target uh, audience for us. We wanted to cover this uh, deployment of the application over heterogeneous environments, and we really thought that that uh, Exopera would be a great fit for this for this part. So we chose uh, obviously Tosca for because it's really easy to to define the and uh, abstract the infrastructure definitions in nodes and also application definition and connect these two with the relationships. Of course, since Tosca is uh, an international standard, there is no vendor locking as in proprietary, uh, uh, let's say, implementations of, of uh, various configuration tools. Uh, and also, most of the things that, that uh, Tosca is covering actually fit perfectly to, to, both, to both projects, such as uh, the configuration of relationship between the, the nodes, and the, especially the uh, application uh, component nodes and the policies, uh, the triggers and the workloads we want to define for, for let's say, HPC uh, defined job workflows. Uh, and Ansible uh, uh, is here because we implement the, the, the life cycle of the operation of nodes uh, through Ansible playbooks. Uh, and we specifically chose Ansible because it's first uh, choice among the tools for configuration management, for sure. Uh, it's really easy to learn. It fits perfectly with the Tosca YAML because it's also, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, definition. the definition of the Tosca of Ansible playbooks is also uh, very similar to Tosca and its YAML. Uh, and uh, it has a great community support and a vast selection of modules that can be reused uh, very easily through this, these playbooks. Uh, and of course, the important point is that uh, he, it is agentless by design, so you don't need to, to supply any agents to, to store or to, to, to um, execute on specific targets, especially for HPC, this was, this was uh, a nice fit. So for Exopera, in a nutshell, what is the vision of Exopera? First of all, uh, Exopera wants to be a very lightweight, uh, lightweight orchestrator, and we want to build an X system that uh, that provides uh, all the necessary tools for for this uh, for this kind of orchestration. And of course, uh, the Opera uh, orchestrator is one of those uh, one of those tools for sure. Uh, it has its own state. It stores the state while while it uh, actually deploys the the, the blueprints, the Tosca Caesars. Uh, it supports Tosca uh, version 1.3. Uh, it was first uh, CLI based, but now uh, we have also a different implementation of the REST APIs. It can be easily encapsulated into Docker images. Uh, and also we have uh, this uh, Exopera SaaS uh, variant, which can be uh, deployed on premise and used as a software as a service. Uh, the, you see here the links, uh, so it, it's really easy to start with, uh, with Exopera and uh, and the uh, uh, examples there. Uh, which are the main or the high level features uh, we want uh, to support, we wanted to support uh, 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 the use cases. Uh, first of all, the support for assume clean start, which was one of the requirements for the HPC job workflow uh, uh, execution. Uh, this comes uh, really handy with when you have a, a large uh, deployment or a large uh, a number of uh, platforms to be deployed on, uh, and actually, it it uh, when when something breaks in deployment, you can you can actually restore uh, the deployment from where it broke, 
or you can use the clean start option for, for uh, starting all over the deployment. Also, we support the parallelization of the deployment uh, within Xopera. This means that we you can specify the number of threads uh, that the deployment can use for, uh, for, for instance, for deploying on different platforms simultaneously. Uh, there is initial support for uh, Caesar diff and update, which means that you can actually uh, patch the, the Caesar files, the Caesar blueprint, and deploy it over an existing deployment and also see the differences between those blueprints. Uh, and of course, uh, from the Radon perspective, a uh, very important part was uh, implemented with the implementation of policies uh, through, uh, through the notification and events, uh, events of uh, triggering of events, uh, which we saw even before. Uh, now I'll pass the word to, uh, to the next use case, uh, which is uh, uh, a Radon system living use case, uh, Sara, uh, and I pass the word to uh, Domenico. Thank you, Dragan. Um, I'm going to share the um, uh, Dragon, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, Dragon, please, you should uh, stop sharing your screen. Otherwise, I cannot do on my side. Oh, Julian. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, as Dragon said, uh, this uh, use case uh, is about is uh, about a solution in the domain of uh, ambient assisted living. Uh, in particular, uh, Sara, uh, this is the name of the solution, is a uh, um, a system integrating auto, uh, home automation and a robotic system uh, with the aim to prolong the autonomy and delay the institutionalization of Everly. Uh, Sara provides uh, health monitoring and assistance in daily living tasks to Everly and their caregiver while being at home. And Sara is being developed by engineering uh, as a prototypical uh, module of its uh, of the engineering areas uh, solution in the domain of healthcare. Um, so, sorry. Oh, oh okay. Um, so the the. Um, the, the SARA provides to uh, both, as I said, uh, both to caregivers and uh, elderly um, a collection of assistive tasks that can be uh, broadly classified in four main uh, classic. We have functionalities or assistive tasks, as I said in the, in the SARA jargon, to address uh, um, physical decline and uh, therapy. Uh, we have assistive tasks to deal with uh, cognitive decline, health management, and uh, to address the psych psychological needs of elderly. Uh, the, in, in this slide, uh, um, you can see the, the main component and protocols uh, used in the implementation of SARA. Um, and I want to draw your attention on the fact that the software components the both uh, are available, uh, both as a service in the cloud. This is the area SARA part here in the, in the slide. And other components instead are uh, made available uh, on uh, field devices or wearable devices. So we can have a belt uh, worn by the, the patients. Uh, we have the 
uh, mobile phone of the patient, or we have traditional, uh, more traditional uh, home automation technology with the devices communicating via Zigbee. And we have also more advanced devices uh, like a motorized and sensorized uh, uh, robotic rollator or a humanoid robot. We, are, we use a pepper robot currently in our, uh, in our implementation. Uh, all these uh, components, the, the communication between these uh, field components occur via uh, various various protocol as indicated in, in this slide and the field device and the um, services in the cloud communicate either via uh, cellular network or landline or IP uh, networking on the internet. Uh, in, the, in the context of the, of the project, the, the objective of our use case was the re-engineering of uh, SARA assistive tasks and CLOE IoT services to take advantage of the fast infrastructure. Uh, just to clarify, CLOE IoT, CLOE IoT services are services offered by a platform that uh, engineering use developed internally uh, to address uh, uh, or yeah, IoT specific uh, requirements. Uh, so the, 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 the IoT services uh, comprise services uh, to deal with the management of devices, management of events uh, generated by uh, the, the field devices. And uh, in the project, we mm, focused on two uh, assistive tasks from uh, SARA, the full management assistive task and remote gate analysis assistive task. Um, the objective was the um, re-engineering of these uh, two assistive task to make uh, use of the OpenFAS platform. The choice uh, for OpenFAS uh, um, platform is uh, motivated by the fact that OpenFAS can be also deployed on um, um, field de devices, uh, single board computing, uh, computers like the Raspberry we have on board of our uh, robotic uh, rollator. In this presentation, I'm going to focus mainly on the remote gate analysis assistive task. So uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, the, uh, this assistive task indeed is a distributed application, we have a component deployed on board of the robotic rollator, and it is the gate sampler on the left side of the, of the, um, of the slide, and a gate server available as a service on, in the, on the cloud. The overall objective of this assistive task is to um, uh, sample, create uh, the, the gate uh, sample representing uh, the um, distance of the uh, legs of the patient from the backside of the rollator and uh, um, cluster these, uh, these time series in a way that um, uh, general practitioner uh, or uh, specialist can use this information to assess the, uh, the condition of the patient. On the, uh, on the field, on, uh, on board of the rollator, the gate sampler take care of the, the actual sampling process, the sequencing of the uh, time series and the encoding and the transfer to the, the gate sample, uh, to the gate server where the, the, uh, the Time series are clustered, encrypted, and stored uh, for uh, subsequent analysis. Uh, the, in this slide, I present the, the way we um, re-engineered the, re the, the, the solution in order to take advantage of the open fast and in general of, of the fast approach. On the field level, what we did is uh, we uh, factored out the stateless part of uh, um, 
the gate sampler and we uh, encoded uh, sorry the, the, the joke but we uh, took the encoding functionalities and made that available as a function on open fast and on the um, cloud side the the whole um, uh, gate server was decomposed in terms of its uh, core functionality and you can see here we identified the functionality to start uh, um, a gate analysis session, stop a session, add sample uh, coming from the sampler, proceed with the clustering, uh, encrypt the, 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 the cluster and proceed with the, with the storage. Uh, the, the, one of the, of the advantage of um, uh, providing the encoding functionality uh, as a function outside the gate sampler is the fact that we envisage the possibility to deploy additional functionality on the on the uh, on the rollator so the, the, the functionalities of the rollator are not fixed but we can add additional functionalities and these additional functionalities services for the uh, for the patient can take advantage of these uh, of this encoding function and other function in uh, coming from other assistive task so here uh, we have uh, a video um, that by using the Radon um, graphical modeling tool presents the, the function, the service template uh, accounting for the function present in, the, in this uh, uh, gate analysis assistive task. You see on the left, you have the component residing on board of the robotic rollator with the, the encode time series functionality. And on the right side, the, the part residing on the, on the cloud. You have the SARA cloud node with the, the instance open fast deployed as a service on the, on the cloud and the four main functionalities that we extracted from the previous uh, gate server. Uh, of course, these are not the only uh, functionality that we have to implement uh, the gate analysis task. Indeed, in this screenshot here, you can see all the uh, components so, uh, that we develop, developed to implement this, uh, this functionality. And in addition to the uh, open fast instance, you uh, so before and the functionality already present, you can see that we also have a more traditional uh, uh, technology uh, contributing to the realization of these, of, of these functionality. So we have a, a Java application that is gate sampler, we have a MongoDB um, time series uh, database management system and, and the like. And in, in here, we have another um, uh, short video presenting the um, X-Opera or orchestrator uh, already introduced by Dragon Network. On the left side of the, uh, of the, 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 the frame, you have the, uh, you can see the GUI of the uh, open fast instance deployed on board of the, uh, of the rollator that you can see in picture. And on the right side, uh, instead, there is the uh, open fast instance residing on the cloud. So here uh, you should, if I may go, so to. Okay, you see the, the video started. You see in the, in the shell here the, the work being done by the, the X Opera orchestrator. And you, you see that the, the various functions start to appear to be deployed on the open fast instance that we mentioned. So you have the encode time series already deployed, and then you see the the function to start stop the session of the, the samples added in the, into the cloud. And uh, to conclude this uh, brief uh, 
presentation, I want to mention just the uh, benefit we observed during the realization of this uh, of this use case. Uh, first of course, uh, the, uh, we, we appreciated the reduction of cost introduced by the fact that we adopted um, uh, the, the, the Radon Tost orchestrator. So in terms of the, uh, this increased automa automation, uh, uh, let now us to reduce the cost. Um, uh, the, in terms of uh, technical implementation, um, the, of course, there is the benefit brought in by the adoption of the FAST model. Now, the management of the execution uh, environment is no longer on the shoulder uh, of, the, of the developer of SARA, but this is outsourced to the, uh, the colleagues managing the the open fast infrastructure and uh, also the uh, the benefit we appreciate is, is the uh, reduced effort for the um, development of maintenance of the deployment bundles and these thanks to the graphical modeling tool and the radon particles made available from the uh, from the radon project and uh, this slide concludes my presentation i have here uh, a slide that you can use to uh, as an entry point to get more information about the both project Radon and Sodalite, and uh, and that it's from my side. So uh, if there are questions, I'm happy to try to answer. So, so Chris, do you, um, do you have a couple closing comments? Um, we do have one question, but I thought we would take that after you make your comments. Um, no, I just want to um, uh, comment about uh, what an excellent presentation this was. It's a, it's a very comprehensive set of uh, use cases that uh, demonstrate the power of Tosca and use cases that are different from the, the sort of the early infrastructure as a cloud uh, targets that um, that were at the roots of Tosca. So it's it shows the, <clears throat> the power of Tosca and how it's evolved to uh, really handle any type of cloud application, not just the, the, the original infrastructure as a cloud paradigm. And um, so I want to uh, commend the uh, presenters for uh, excellent work and a very, uh, very informative um, presentation. So thank you very much. I do want to leave a couple of minutes for questions. I think we have one or two in the in the Q&A uh, box. So perhaps we can quickly go through those and then sure. we can wrap it up. We do. Okay. So first of all, um, an expression of appreciation for the valuable um, presentation that you guys made today. And thank you very much. I mean, that really was um, really uh, again, we're so grateful and we'll do a, a good job at, at getting this out there and sharing it with other folks. So the, the question that we, again, we just have a couple of minutes. Um, what were the design decisions in modeling um, using Tosca? For example, why did you choose to model data pipelines using Tosca? And, and again, uh, thanks. Um, I, I think these, uh, thank you for the very kind words and, uh, and for this uh, question. Um, so, um, when you think uh, to, to Tosca modeling, uh, <clears throat> um, with the Delta pipelines, you can have uh, functions that uh, react to events, and, uh, and therefore uh, you want to expose the data pipelines that carry the data that may be source of those events directly at the model level because if uh, everything is hidden to the model, then it becomes difficult to annotate the triggers for the function directly in the model. So that's an example of the reason why the data pipelines are explicit using Tosca. But it is fair to say that there could be a more implicit approach where you don't see everything in the Tosca model. It still works, but then you cannot predicate on what you don't see. And you see an example of this uh, in the presentation we've just seen from uh, uh, Domenico with the SARA use case, because some of the uh, functions there were declared implicitly. And so it is up to the user to choose uh, 
the best approach. We support both. Okay, so just um, again, uh, expression of appreciation. Giuliano, Domenico, Dragan, and Camille, thank you so much. Um, this was really valuable for, uh, for us and certainly for all the folks that have joined us today. And with that, we hope everyone has a delightful afternoon. Thank you very much for hosting thank us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for hosting. You are welcome. Goodbye.